Somebody jumped into a man's car and told him to drive around uptown Charlotte and then beat him up so badly he was in the hospital for days. Only on 9, that victim spoke to our Stephanie Tinoco. And Stephanie, he only got out of the hospital last night. Yes, Scott, and he's recovering well. He told me that he, the suspect told him to pull up to this gravel lot. It was actually empty at the time and told him that he needed to speak to his former employer. Well, that's when he attacked. I do want to warn you that the victim's images are really heartbreaking to look at. He didn't act like he was really going to be a vicious type person at all, you know. And then he just started swinging? Oh, just out of nowhere. He just, just suddenly, when he just started pounding on me just as hard as he could. This 82-year-old man was viciously attacked after he says a man he did not know forced himself inside his car. He just walked up out of, out of the blue and got in the car. He says it all happened as he was pulling up to a red light on Woodlawn Road on Tuesday afternoon. Of course, I was a bit intimidated, but there's not much you can do. He's already in the car. So I said, well, oh, that's good. I can take you where you need to go. Where do you want to go? And he said, downtown. So I said, well, that's fine. I can do that. So he kept driving, but the suspect never gave him an exact address or destination. But he kept telling me where to turn. And eventually made it to an empty gravel lot near the Avid Exchange. That's when he says the man started beating him. Well, he cut under this eye and blood was flying. And I had a cut in my head and I had my, my hair was just completely soaked with blood. The suspect nowhere to be seen. And I started telling him, I need help. I need help. Thankfully, a woman pulled over. She made all the phone calls. She called the police and the ambulance and all that and, and stayed there right with me until it was all done. He thanks the woman who helped him and says he forgives the man who could have killed him. I'm not mad at this man. I pray for him. It's just one of those things that you live through and you're fortunate if you do, and I did. Charles, who you just heard from, told me the suspect took his wallet, keys, and phone, and phone, and thankfully he got two of those items back. He says he's just thankful to be home tonight. Back to you.